welcome to A1R. I'm Anna Olsen, your host tonight. Um, Insights into Consciousness, my show every Thursday night. It's 6.30 Pacific Standard Time here in California. I'm in San Luis Obispo. And then we also have that as 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. So everybody can listen all across the United States and the world. And I'm really, really excited to tell everybody tonight about Feng Shui. And I know that everybody now has basically heard about Feng Shui for the most part, but I really want to go into Feng Shui and how it's also an intuitive practice and how us practitioners, I do Feng Shui, how we go about doing Feng Shui um, where it's uniquely catered to the person who needs it done or needs a little bit of help with it because it is a practice that it actually originated in China. It's been around for over 6,000 years. Why would something be around for 6,000 years if it didn't work? Especially from China. Now we know a lot of Chinese healing. It works very well. It, it's kind of developed around those same concepts of chi and energy and how things work on an energetic level. And these are a lot of things that we know exist, but we can't really show it as well with pictures or with evidence. But if you think of it like radio frequencies, we know that we have cell phone and radio waves that go through the air just because we don't see them does not mean that they don't exist. So this uh, energy that we work with, this chi energy, this qigong or the chi that they traditionally call energy, spirit, um, intention, consciousness, there's so many different words and terms for this energy and really in the English language I'm at a loss a little bit here because in our language we don't have a specific word for what they call chi so that makes it a little bit harder for me to translate exactly what it is as an intuitive usually we say that this is what it feels like so I can tell you what it feels like but I I don't know an exact word to label chi as for English. The best way I can describe it is that it is an active energy that we can feel, that we can put out, that originates a lot of the time in thought. It's a way we create with our thoughts and with our intention. And this is why I think so many um, American families, Australian families need to hear about this. Um, you know, families in the UK, all over the world, anywhere that you are, you know, not just limited to those countries, but just, you know, the, the, this is an Asian practice that we can really benefit from. And what I love about um, communication in this day and age is that we can exchange so much information at such an accelerated speed. And um, it makes... It makes for a better world because we're not just tied to our own beliefs and our own ways of growing up and doing things. It's it's extended to the way that the rest of the world does things. And that really um, gives us more uh, things in our basket to work with, more tools in our basket to work with, more ways to accept the highest and greater good and universal consciousness. So Feng Shui is spelled F-E-N-G S H. UI. It originates in China again over 6,000 years ago is when it started. Wind and it means wind and water. So um, the goal in Feng Shui is to bring about happiness, abundance, and harmony and peace into our lives. And it works. So I'll, I'll go into a whole lot of um, examples um, here and there as I go through the practice and the art of Feng Shui. And I'm also going to add that we don't have to follow it because there's so many rules and regulations to Feng Shui. We don't have to follow it in a way that is just just right um, with uh, following this rules, this list of rules that we have to use. Now, we have to start with that because that does have a lot of um, play in what we're doing here with Feng Shui, but it is also an intuitive practice. When we use our intuition to study and to incorporate the Feng Shui into our lives, we really are, um, I, I would say it's kind of a shortcut rather than kind of going into the study of Feng Shui in detail because people can study Feng Shui for years and years and years. I have been studying Feng Shui and practicing Feng Shui for years and years and years, and there is always more to learn, and there's always more to um, find out and to incorporate into what we're doing. So wind and water, Feng Shui means wind and water. The reason why it has been given that name, there's a long list of reasons why it's been given that name, but 
basically, in, in, in summary, um, it works with energy. Energy acts as wind or water around us and in our space. We know if we have closed windows for months and we, you know, somebody smokes in the house and there's a lot of, you know, really stale air in a house, you know, we can even have people come in and, and basically test the air and, and know that, wow, you're inhaling a lot of contaminants. It's very toxic. You need to open up some windows and air this out. It's the same concept, except with energy. We're cleaning out old stagnant energy. We're bringing in new positive energy that actually make changes, not in the way we feel and our well-being, but it also makes changes in our lives to attain goals that we have. And we can put these um, different goals according to Feng Shui and how we practice this in our surroundings. So not only to remind us, but to also push the energy to that direction of our goals. So I wanted to give some basic rules on Feng Shui just to kind of give everybody a little kickstart into starting and incorporating Feng Shui into their daily lives. It works every time. I guarantee it. And the more that you use it, the better you get at it, the better you get in that intuition. It's like exercising a muscle and making it stronger. Um, I've seen it work over and over and over again. Some of the uses for Feng Shui that you wouldn't even... Um, think of would be that um, it creates peace among residents in your household, in your home. It focuses on aspects collectively of occupants' lives in the home, and it gives attention actively to those issues or goals. It works, and it works every time. So just as an example, when um, my kids were younger and we were living in a, a little cottage, it was probably like an 85-year-old cottage that I just absolutely loved and adored. And uh, we had a game room that I left all, all of their toys in and stuff just to play with even like video games and all that. It was the, the place where they would go as a reward or just somewhere where that they, they could, you know, kind of get messy and just be kids. So I decided that I was going to try out Feng Shui on this room. And that's the first time I really tried this out to see if it worked. And I moved everything around. I studied the guides. I used my intuition. I positioned the bed just right. I, you know, put the TV in the right place. Um, and before when I had this room for the kids to play in, they never went in there. They didn't want to go in there. Their friends didn't want to go in there. I never wanted to go in there. Um, it wasn't particularly messy. It was a typical kid's room, but nobody went in there. When we feng shuied it, everybody wanted to be in this room. Everybody was attracted to this room. The kids played in the room more often. They were more peaceful. They got along better. Uh, and when I looked at the bag, well, I'll go over that in a minute. I noticed that it stimulated a part of my life in the financial realm and my finances got better. So that's what feng shui does. That's the purpose behind it. And you may, I mean, if you're like me, you may start to think, yeah, right. Okay. So I put some furniture in the right place and suddenly my, my wealth increases. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That is exactly what I'm saying. And people have been doing it because it works for over 6,000 years all over the world. And all of the wealthy people. And I know that, you know, basically exist. <laughs> they feng shui their, they have people come in and feng shui their buildings before they're built. They have people come in and feng shui it after they're built. Um, people who have a sustainable wealth do incorporate feng shui because it works. It's a little known secret. They don't want to sound crazy. Neither do I, but it works. So I always think this is science-based. Um, for work, it can also help you reach your goals. Um, you can start it in the garden and the yard, and then you can flow it into the home. And size, like let's say you have a tiny apartment in New York. If you're living you know, in a very small space, that's not the most important aspect of it. Since we're all starting somewhere, what matters is what is done with the space that you have now. So that's really important to remember that you can't make any excuses and say, well, I only have a little tiny room that I'm living in right now. No, it'll still work for everyone every time in any space. So um, the first thing, though, is that you want to work with good intention and decluttering. So that's the first part. This is, for, this is like the 101. This is Feng Shui 101 for the people who have never done this and are, they're just totally new to this. Um, and I really hope that I can go over a few things for people who are basically doing Feng Shui 101, but they want to add some things. So 
first of all, you look around right now in your room where, or the yard or wherever it is that you are now, look around where you are. I'm going to ask you, do you see a lot of clutter? Meaning is there a corner or a piece of furniture with stuff just piled on it? Clothes, papers, newspapers, magazines, whatever it is. Is there anything, you know, boxes stacked somewhere um, that you were meaning to go through and you know that there's some things that you need to throw away in there? Anything like that, you want to sit, you want to sit and kind of think about that. Hmm. Clutter is the first thing you want to get rid of in feng shui. Feng shui is, um, the principle is that if air or water were coming in and flowing into your room, let's say your house, through the windows and the door, uh, would it be able to flow around everything clearly and cleanly or would it kind of like smack into it and it's just a pretty much like the stagnant energy um, barrier. That's what we want to look at. We want to see how it flows around things. If water or air were to like a big gust of wind were to come into the, the house and um, or the business, this is for offices, businesses, retail spaces, this is for yards. This is for parks. This is for this. Any space can benefit from feng shui. Um, the next thing you want to ask is, is the room pleasing to the eye? Does it feel good to be in the room? When you walk in, does it feel clear and clean? Or is there some weird, like, oh, I, I can't open the door all the way and it's hitting something. We want to prevent anything from um, not being repaired. We want it to all be in good condition. We want, you know, furniture, to, furniture and doors to be in good working condition. Um, anything that needs to be repaired should. And um, in addition, you want to ask yourself, is the room boring? Is it lacking in interest or is it lacking in intention? Is it lacking in color? There has to be a lot of creativity and intention in a room. So you don't want it to be too boring either. Um, and then we also need, you have to remember that like we need to subconsciously memorize everything in a room. When we walk into a room and you look around, your subconscious mind is so intelligent and like all encompassing that it's memorizing every item, every single little thing in that room. That is exhausting. If uh, like, let's say you have a ton of stuff stacked in the corner, like I said, and that is a big energy, stagnant energy block for Feng Shui. You don't want any stuck energy in a corner or on any object or even under the bed, even under the bed, that's an issue. Even closets, you know, you need things to be pretty clear and free flowing. Don't let this overwhelm you though, when you start out, because there's always the smart, the start small scale, and then you can work your way up. And that is what this is about. Our environment is a reflection of our mind. Our mind is also feeding off of what is around us in our environment. It is an exchange. If we start even small scale in our environment and then work our way up from there, there's always the baby steps and nothing is too small to start with. You're still doing good work if you start out small. So I want to reiterate that again, that you can do it with a small space. You can do it at little baby steps. How, how do you eat an entire watermelon? One bite at a time. Okay. So um, we need to subconsciously memorize automatically every object in a room or space. Remember that. So remember that our thoughts and our minds are very powerful and intention is key in our lives for goal setting, action, and results. So you look at the aspect of clutter. This is always the first step. Clutter is ind indicative of a stagnant energy around that subject topic in our lives for that area of the room. And this is where I go into the grid. We have a bagua and a grid that we would put over our house. So if you were to look uh, like an aerial view over the building, the office space, the house, where, wherever you're feng shui, you're looking down on it from above, like let's say Google Earth, okay? You're looking down on it. You're going to, first of all, locate the front entrance. Now, sometimes that's the front door of the building, retail space or house or whatever, um, or even the front gate to a garden. We're looking at where the entrance is, where you enter the area more, uh, most often. Some people park in their garage and they go in through their garage door. That will be your entry space to start your Feng Shui Bagua. And that front door will go in the directly in the front of the Bagua. And I have a grid here that I love because it has these really great uh, little pictures and they make it very, very simple. This is a great grid from um, a website that I was on. I just really like that they make it so simple and I'll mention the name of it later, but 
This is our basic grid for feng shui. Um, if you could close up on that, that'd be great. This is uh, the basic grid for feng shui and how we incorporate the feng shui bagua and grid into a space. So this could be put over the blueprint of your house, um, aerial view style. And this here in the front would be the front door, the front entrance that would go here. Um, and you want to make basically the entire thing a rectangle uh, shape over the top of the room, the house, the garden, whatever it is. And um, for each box and subject here, that will be a part of the um, room or building or whatever. That's going to be that area. So like, let's say this is my kid's room, which is how it is in my house um, when I put this over the blueprint of our house. So this is wealth. This is the wealth area. It says the colors are blue, purple, and red, and that it's a wood element. So let me go into what that means. That means that since my kid's room is in the wealth area of our house on the grid, if you put this over aerial style of blueprint of our house, that we could incorporate to improve and increase wealth. We would put in blue, purple, and red and the wood element in that area of the room. We want to work on wealth first. You want to start getting that wealth going. You want to go in and declutter and plan out the feng shui in that room right away. That's where you want to tackle it first. The reason why I go into wealth first, um, oh yeah, this is Ken Lauer's uh, grid, by the way, for the feng shui. KenLauer.com is a really great resource because they make it very simple for your basic one-on-one feng shui. Um, so let's say that I go into our kid's room. Um, the first thing that I want to do is reiterate that this is large scale for the house. You can also do this exact same grid on a, the, above a room, and you can even do it above scale um, aerial view for a desk, a tabletop. It can go from very large over the entire property for the grid, and you can keep going more and more detailed all the way into um, a shelf in your bathroom. Okay, this doesn't just stop at, you know, the, the, be the bedroom or the office. It's for every room, every space, every time. So what you do is you go in, you um, look at where the wealth area is of the house. You can even go into that room and then make sure you focus on the wealth area of the room. And that can really put some punch and some power into what you're doing and your intention setting in this area. Um, I always go to, you know, the wealth and the income first because the wealth is, um, you know, usually um, basically focusing on the wealth area of the house, like the room from the entrance and like even a dresser or a tabletop in the room to start. It's about starting with your highest priorities first. Usually wealth is the segue or the landing point before we're going to meet a lot of our other goals. So usually people need money to do just about anything. Okay. You know, that's the reality of it. So with wealth, the colors are, um, you know, since the colors are blue, purple, and red, um, in our boys' bedroom, what I did is um, I put those, I incorporated those colors into the room. We're going to start just stimulating that chi to bring it in, to start stimulating that wealth. And then we put some red accents in there, and that'll help stimulate it even more. Red is a fire color. Now, you have to remember all these colors have an element. Okay. Red is a fire color. Pretty obviously yellow, orange. Those are all fire colors. That's what you put under something to like really set it on fire. That's what really makes it move. But the blue is also very important to put it into the same uh, space. The aspect of the blue is more of like a water or a soothing element, which sort of counteracts the red. So it's not overbearing. So um, first, we put those colors in the room. You can paint the wall. You can put bedding in there that looks like that, pillows, anything you want to really bring those colors in. Um, it should be done in a very calm, meaningful manner using your intuition as well. And um, with our boys' bedroom, when I brought in the wood element, I brought in um, a bunk bed type um, set that we don't put any mattress under it because that's actually bad, bad feng shui. There's just a mattress on top, but there's this big, massive wooden um, bunk bed that's kind of elevated. And it's, you know, there's a lot of the wood element in there. There's the blue. Um, there's the accents of red. Purple is another one of the colors, but that is just blue and red mixed. So, um, but purple is another option if you do it, like I say, a girl's room. And, um, you know, 
Pink is also a nice watered down version of red. So remember that, that you can play with colors. Um, and then there was, uh, the other thing that we, we really like to do, oh, like I really love to do when I'm feng shui, um, is that you can personalize it and add something to the room with the beneficial elements and colors to set more intention and goals and to make it really start working to make, or to make it work fast. For instance, our son was given an elephant name card with a little, it's a little name card in the NICU. When he was a baby in the NICU, they put his name and his weight and everything on it to like decorate his little um, NICU crib, which is really, really adorable. And um, then his grandmother also got him a little stuffed elephant and there was just elephants coming and popping up everywhere. And we just really felt like that symbolized our son. He was in the NICU and he was, um, you know, really having a hard time for a little bit there when he was first born. So, you know, we... We kept seeing the elephant everywhere. And um, it was special to us because we, we really felt like elephants symbolized our son and his healing. So we, we, we can set like, let's say an elephant figurine on a wall shelf and add two bigger elephants on either side of it to symbolize a strong support as parents for our child. And then we could add something such as a solid stone, strong and intact to symbolize stability and a strong bond that can't be broken. So um, it would be representing strength in his, in this case. So um, that's a way you can personalize the feng shui intuitively. That's just an example that I can use right off the top of my head to like give you an example of what you can do in any space to really start getting that chi flowing and for the intention to be very clear as to what you want so that even, um, first it's, a, a, it's attracting that chi. And in addition, every time you look at it, you're being reminded of what the, the goal is. What, and that's your subconscious. Remember, we, we, we memorize everything in a room with our subconscious mind. So that is a constant reminder, whether you're staring at it and thinking about it or not, whether you're fully aware of it consciously or not, it's working all the time every day. These are things we can do to put in our environment. So um, with money, with the money area, that, that's, that's the money area 101. It's basic, um, basic feng shui. Um, also, um, you can adding, you can start adding simple things such as a multifaceted round crystal to hang in the window in this area, which catches sunlight or adding coins on red ribbons in the money area of the room. Um, now this would strengthen the support you need for fortune. And, um, those are just really little things you can do, like little things that pack a punch for your intention in the same area. So, and it continues to strengthen you in this area and it attracts energies to manifest your wealth. So this feng shui practice is really to start pulling in those energies and really fully, fully realizing your goals. It's also about setting clear intentions. Now we know when somebody just sets a clear intention, at least they have an idea of what they want. It's much easier to get something when you know exactly what you want than just kind of floating around and going, oh, well, it looks like we don't have enough money for this. Or, you know, that's kind of a careless way I feel to be. Um, and, and I think a lot of us are trained to, up to be that way and, and to plan less and to just sort of go with the flow more, which can be wonderful in a lot of ways. But this is more of an intentional practice. And I've seen it work when you really need to bring in the big guns, the big positive guns, you know, it's like, the good energy. So, um, I've noticed that the closer I get to completing the feng shui work in my own home, um, the, and especially when it's completed, it brings our family closer to a place where we can make a decision to move to a better, bigger home, or we can make a move financially. It just usually, it, it just causes things to move and grow quickly. And by the time we're done feng shuiing the whole house, usually it's time to move to a bigger, better house, or it, we, we have more decisions to make. It really opens things up. So um, I have oftentimes wondered if it's the actual energy or the intention we set um, consciously or both combined that does the trick with feng shui. So I think it's both, but it works and it works every time. I challenge you, not just challenge you, but I invite you to try this. Um, even a little remedy, you can look at things up online. You want to really make sure you have a nice reputable source for this, but, um, Feng Shui is very detailed and a lot of work can be done to Feng Shui a home or a building. So it's important to use a calm, quiet intention when using this practice because a rushed negative stressed Feng Shui practice is a Feng Shui practice that's backfiring 
or that will take much longer to work. So the intention is really the most of this, a lot of light, plants, colors, intentional placing of objects, um, decluttering, really putting intention into what you're doing and why, researching it a little bit, just trying little things here and there. You'll start to realize that this works. Feng shui, feng shui works and it works every time. Feng shui is just a label that they use in China for this practice that has been used in all different countries all over the world for centuries. So I wanted to share this with you. If you want to do a Feng Shui consult with me, I do Feng Shui consults. If you want to leave it up to me, I can help you with it intuitively. And I can do that work, a lot of that work for you. When I've done these clearings and these intention settings in people's businesses and homes, it's cleared out bad energy and it's brought in a lot of good. And the only thing that we need to be careful of is bringing in too much business at once so that they're too crazy busy. 